breakfast, the same old, same old, same old all the time, especially on keto. We got bacon, we got eggs, we got the usual stuff. Okay, so why can't we just have a little bit more fun with it? Get a little bit more creative. You always see me in a scientific light, right? I'm always doing these videos breaking down science. Well, today I want to take it into the kitchen in a little bit more of a fun way. And I'm going to show you a really, really simple keto breakfast that you can make. It's going to blow your mind. We're talking keto breakfast pizza, but there's a specific order of operations you've got to follow in order to make this thing work. You can make it into a panini or you can leave it as a pizza. So let's go ahead and let's dive right in. I'm going to break down how to make it and I'm going to give you the nitty gritty fun facts surrounding the science and the physiology as well. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and then please hit that bell icon icon because that's going to allow you to get notifications whenever I go live or just whenever I post a new video, which is almost every single day these days. All right, let's get right into cooking. So the first thing that I've got is I've got three organic cage-free eggs. Very important that you go for high quality omega-3 eggs. Spend the extra couple bucks. I promise you it's going to be worth it. And then you're going to notice what I'm doing is I'm using two full eggs, but then I'm using just the yolk of the third egg. What I'm trying to do is get a better fat to protein ratio. Believe it or not, and I've talked about this in other videos, the whites are actually a pretty inflammatory part of the egg. You see, that's the part that has a lot of the things that can cause a bit of chaos in your body. That essentially is the placenta. The placenta carries a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the things that the chicken ate. The yolk is just the fat and pretty much protein. So let's get more of the yolk. So you know, go ahead and scramble this up. Now when we scramble it up, we want to make sure that we're scrambling it as finely as we possibly can. We're not trying to leave big chunks because eventually we're going to lay this over the pizza. So we want to make sure that we're kind of chopping it up as we scramble it. Now what I've used to cook the eggs in is actually bison tallow. You don't have to use this. You can use coconut oil. You can use you know butter if you really want to. I prefer tallow because it makes it, it gets a well-rounded flavor, but also talk about a good quality fat. And bison tallow is super, super high quality when it comes down to the omega-3 profile because bison is not, uh, it's, it has a specific regulation by the government where it has to be fed grass. It can't be fed uh, grain and soy and things like that. So just a, a safe bet. Okay, then once I've got that all squared away, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the eggs aside. Okay, I'm going to put them on a separate plate, leave them to be because I'm going to come back to them in a minute. Now, all the while, I have a pizza crust in the oven. Okay, I have a cauliflower crust pizza. Big fans of these guys, you've seen me all over Facebook because I'm on their advisory board. So Cauliflower Foods has a great plant-based crust that doesn't have dairy and doesn't have any inflammatory ingredients. It's really simple. We're talking cauliflower, we're talking a couple other basic ingredients like some almonds and some herbs. Super simple stuff. So the reason I want that is the estrogen modulation. First thing in the morning, I don't want a bunch of grains. I don't want a ton of almond flour. I don't want a ton of cheese. So. If you guys are interested, there is a link down below if you want to get these crusts. And I'll link out and explain a little bit more as we go, but the special discount down in the description. Okay, so once I pop that in the oven, I'm going to let that sit in the oven for about, I don't know, 15 minutes, and we'll get to that in a second. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put some bacon in a pan. You can use turkey bacon, you can use regular bacon, you can use thinner slices of pork belly if you really wanted to make it thick, but I recommend trying to go as thin as possible because you're going to need it so the pizza doesn't end up too heavy later on. You want to cook it enough so that it's of course cooked, but then you want it to still be flexible because eventually what we're going to do is we're going to weave it onto the pizza. So let it still be flexible uh, and just be careful with the kind of bacon that you pick. Get one that doesn't have a bunch of preservatives and stuff in it. So then once I've got the bacon uh, totally cooked up, I'm going to put that aside. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the cauliflower crust out of the oven. Okay, now you want to get it as crispy as you possibly can simply because, again, we're going to cut it and we want it to be sturdy. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some almond cheese. I recommend almond cream cheese, like Kite Hill's got a really good one. You're going to spread that on just a couple of tablespoons, spread it on the pizza, and you want a thin layer of this. You want it to kind of melt a little bit, and then you're going to take a different kind of almond cheese, some kind of vegan cheese that's shredded, and you're going to mix that into it a little bit more. So this is going to give it a little bit more consistency and give it just a nice gooiness without just having it be complete cream cheese. Then you want to go ahead and you want to take your eggs that you already cooked up. I recommend chopping them up a little bit more after they've already uh, cooled down a little bit so they're easier to chop. So go ahead and use a knife, chop them up a little bit, get them as fine as you can, and then you're going to sprinkle that and layer it down on the crust. When you layer it down on the crust, you want it to kind of mix in with the cheese. Okay, you're looking to just as flat as possible. Now, an optional thing, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and add some pico de gallo. This is totally optional, a little bit of salsa here and there. Just adds a little bit of flavor and a little bit of depth if you like that. Now, the fun part. Okay, we take the bacon and we actually start weaving it onto the pizza. The whole idea behind the weaving is just 
first of all, it looks cool, but second of all, it allows you to get more surface area of that bacon. In this case, we're using good quality bacon. It's going to taste really good. We're talking like the first legit breakfast pizza for keto. So go ahead and weave those suckers on. And then, I mean, you have your end result is a nice breakfast pizza right then and there. Okay, you could go ahead and add some sour cream to it if you wanted to, but one of the things that I like to do is actually cut it in half and then fold it over. And usually, if you've actually cooked the crust hard enough, you're going to be able to fold it over without a problem. So fold it over, and once it's cut, and then you actually have more of a panini. It's more of a breakfast sandwich. So you can eat it as a pizza or eat it as a panini sandwich style thing. And honestly, that's kind of the benefit of using these cauliflower crusts, especially the plant-based ones, is they're sturdy. Most of them end up soggy, or they have a bunch of other ingredients in there that add up the carb count a ton. So these guys are awesome. And again, I'm on their advisory board, so not only do you support them, but you help support some of the things that I work on if you check them out. So down in the description, you can check them out and you can get a special discount on these plant-based cauliflower crusts. So definitely don't want to miss out on that if you want to try making this pizza. So there we have it. This thing tastes amazing. The texture in your mouth is the perfect combination of crunchy, soft, crunchy again, and gooey. It's, it's amazing what happens inside your mouth with this, simply because the crust is crunchy, the bacon adds a crisp, but then the cheese kind of gives it almost a bounce texture, and then the cheese makes it gooey. I mean, it's all these textures in one, but it's like you're eating all the good parts of a breakfast and you get that just in one mesmerizing taste. So really powerful stuff. So this is what we want to do. This is how we want to be launching our day off when we're starting a ketogenic diet or just having some fun with it. If you like videos like this and you like these recipe style videos, please post down in the comment section. Happy to do more like this. And again, big thanks again to Cauliflower Foods and make sure you check them out down in the description. See y'all in the next video.